Let us pray. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among others, and to make music in the heart. Holy God, we give you thanks for this evening, for laughter, for friendship, for ways in which they feed our souls so that we might feed your world. We give thanks for Nancy joining us this night, and we ask a blessing upon this time. In your holy name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Well, um, it is our privilege and our delight to welcome our colleague from down the street, uh, the Reverend Nancy Simpson. So uh, welcome. Woo! Thank you. Thanks. Hi, everybody. Jan Hi. and Marsha and Mickey and Carrie and Phil and Rhonda and Carol and Marilyn. Marilyn? Yeah. Marilyn. Yes. And I'm waiting for our food pantry director. I've invited her. I don't know if she'll come, but she's really fun. So we'll see. Um, so I'm, I'm real happy to be with y'all and to have some conversation tonight on feeding the hungry. That, yeah. That's the part of the, the yeah, poem. That, yeah, yeah. So do you want to share with well, us? I know, I know you know some people really well and others not as well. So what, um, what would you like to share with us about yourself to kind of help us get situated and get to know you a little bit? As okay. A well, I'm bringing you myself from Dayton, Texas. I live here in Dayton. We're out here by the grass farms and cattle and horses and very flat land country. But I do serve at St. Paul's Lutheran in Baytown. I've been there. This is uh, my eighth year. And uh, we do have a food pantry there that we're very active in. Uh, I am married to my husband, Greg, who's an optometrist. And um, we don't have any children. We have um, just animals, lots of animals. And um, I'm also a, a Baytown police chaplain and Harris County Precinct 3 Deputy Constable Chaplain. So I do a lot of engagement in the community as well as at the church. So, um, and um, we do have a connection with the hospital, Baytown Methodist Hospital. We make prayer blankets for them. We bless them in the church and then um, give them for the chaplains to hand out to whoever needs that comfort and prayer and uh, wrap around them, know that someone cares about them. So we're involved in that. I love it. I didn't even know and, that part. That's um, awesome. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have a few people that do that. Not a whole lot. Most people don't know how to do that. I don't. Yeah. And uh, but they the ones that do it, it's it's a ministry for them and they love using their hands and to knit or crochet and pray for whoever may be receiving those prayer shawls or prayer blankets, really. Mm -hmm. I am really trying to beef up on my Spanish, learn Spanish. I've been trying that for years. I use a little bit of it sometimes in just a little bit in services to welcome people. And I use it on the phone at church. Mm. We are a 211 number, our church. So that means if somebody calls 211, that's affiliated with United Way. And if they have a food crisis, they're going to get, you know, in touch with us so we can get them food. Wow. So while we're waiting, um, possibly for your colleague, do you want to kind of kick us off and share with us a little bit about um, uh, some of y'all's programs with Feeding the Hungry? Or what would, what would you like to share with us tonight? Well, I, I guess I want to talk about our food pantry. I think the word pantry sounds like a little pantry. And it did start in the church kitchen in the closet many, many years ago before I was ever a pastor there. And 
it has just, you know, grown and grown. And we now take over a wing of the church that used to be confirmation classes and other things in those rooms. Now it stores food, has a lot of shelving, refrigerators, freezers. Those refrigerators and freezers are now in our fellowship hall, that wing of the church outside behind a fence. Um, and so we have to keep inventing or reinventing how we do things. Sometimes I feel like I'm MacGyver. Do y'all watch that show sometimes? <laughs> yeah. Are you trying to use everyday things to make things work and, and make things happen? So you just have to keep, uh, keep plugging away. But I would say that ministry is really, to me, food for the body, yes, but food for the soul as well because we have uh, our volunteers typically do a little prayer circle out front and they pray, invite people to say a prayer before we open. And whoever wants to join can. Now, now we have the parking lot ministry. So people are actually driving up. They used to walk up out of their cars. So that's changed things. And um, so it's, you know, leave, pop your trunk open and, and that, which most of the churches are doing it that way now. But um, let me tell you of an incident we had that was just incredible. And that was when, before COVID, people would walk down our long sidewalk that comes into the church. They come into the gate, walk down the long sidewalk. And they would come into our building, register, do all that, and then come out and, and go to these different tables that had different types of food. You know, like one table's the vegetables, another table is the fruit, another table is bread, things like that. So I happened to be working it that day, and I think I was behind the canned good, one of the canned good tables. And I see down the sidewalk a what looked like a grandmother and her grand, grandchild. And they're coming down the sidewalk and the grandchild is female and she's kind of hunched over and her hair is all down in her face. I couldn't figure out how could she see where she was going. And she was stumbling along with her holding on to her grandmother down the sidewalk. And I was just kind of looking at this and as they approached where I was at my table, the grandmother looked at me and said, uh, will you be able to pray for my granddaughter? And I said, well, sure, I can, I can pray for her, yes. And instead of waiting right there, she went right into the church and they just left to register. Well, I was still behind the table waiting. So anyway, they registered, they come out, start getting their food and they get to my table. And I said, can we pray for your granddaughter now? And, and what's the situation? And she said, well, my granddaughter is blind. Can you pray for her? And I said, okay, yes, right now. So I called our food pantry director, Lori, who was standing over a ways. I said, Lori, come over here and let's, let's pray for her. And so I had my hand on the, the granddaughter and I think Lori had her hand on the grandmother and we, you know, and I started praying. And when I, I was praying and I tell you that girl was so still, I couldn't feel any movement from her at all. It was like just absolute still. And she was just, her head was down and we were praying and everything. And we finished, we all said, amen. And she raised up her head and she was just like smiling her. She got her posture up. She went down the sidewalk and she was like kind of skipping with her grandmother like, like that. And she was, and she said, grandma, did you hear that? They prayed for me, for me, grandma. Did you hear grandma? grandma and she just went down the sidewalk like this with this voice and she was upright and happy and her it was just i've never forgotten that 
that's why I say, oh, it's for body and soul. Because had I said to her, I'll be happy to pray for your granddaughter later on. When I do my prayers tonight, before I go to bed, I'm going to pray for your granddaughter. It would have been a totally different situation, you know? Instead, she's like this voice out there. Everyone is looking at her and they're just like getting happy because you can't help but get happy to hear her and to see the change that came over her with a little prayer, which is really a big prayer because God is, you know, there. And, and from then on, I taught the congregation to pray in the moment. When someone says, can you pray for my nephew? Say, can we pray now? I'd be happy to pray for them now, 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 because it makes such a difference, such a bond in that time, you know? Um, and, um, so I've seen a change in the congregation too, how they do that now. Now they're, they're not, and I tell them, don't be afraid to do that. When, when we prayed for that granddaughter, we held up the food line. Everyone had to stop because we were like this, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, red light right there. Everyone stops so they can have this prayer over. <laughs> but you know what? God was there and I, I had no feeling of, oh, we're holding people up or anything at the time. It was just what needed to be done in the moment. And what I think God wanted in the moment and the spirit was there and it was just marvelous and uh, never forgotten that. Um, so it's more than loading a sack of groceries in somebody's back of their car. And we talked to, you know, from a distance, um, they talk, the volunteers talk to them from a distance, uh, the driver and those in the car, make sure they say hello to them. And how are you doing? Because people need such a connection now and they're lonely and they need more than just physical food. Um, and we know they need God's word. They need prayer. They need someone to say, how are you doing? And I know y'all do that. And um, and welcome, John. And welcome, Maggie. Y'all came in after the, <laughs> but I see you. Um, so, and I also think of um, the passage where uh, the 12 disciples and Jesus, they're going along and people need to be fed. And the disciples say, uh, we'll send them away. Send them away. You know? <laughs> You know, so they can get their own food, send them to the villages. You know, we're tired. And it was the end of the day. And he's like, no, you feed them, feed them. So um, I think of that because a lot of people don't come on the right time. We're open Thursdays, 9 to 11. They'll come at some of them, 11, 15, 11, 30, 12, 30. And, and some of the volunteers, you know, it's like, we're, you know, we close the gate. We're tired, man. We've been here since, you know, 6.30 this morning. And I'm like, we're going to feed them. We're feeding them. So I, I think of Jesus' words saying, you know, you feed them. Uh, but it's been a big community effort. We have uh, had to ask people to help us in the community and are so happy when they do. League College basketball team and the volleyball team and well banker, realtors, and um, we picked up food a lot from uh, Panera Bread and Target would give us stuff and um, just the community, you know, helping us. And, and then we have this turkey giveaway and we've had to learn that, you know, to adjust because when we first started doing something called turkey giveaway on Thanksgiving, when we first did that, we did not have that planned out well. And it was almost a riot in our parking lot. We did not know that turkeys are gold in Baytown. So we had to learn to have a new procedure. And um, so it's been a great learning experience and a 
great outreach. We, we had um, somebody's life saved one time in a food pantry line. Um, somebody had to do uh, CPR and save somebody's life. So all kinds of amazing things happen. Uh, people were praying at that. And so it's been years now doing that. And uh, we now we're adjusting again to the fact that we need to do grant writing. And am I a grant writer? No. <laughs> do we have a professional grant writer in the congregation? No. <laughs> Nancy, you let them know why you need to write grants because you know when we had our food pantry it was one room mm -hmm. and that may have been the way y'all started out in your kitchen but it has mm -hmm. grown so much and you have so many partners mm -hmm. involved in that so would yes. you tell them about that well um i think with all the hurricanes we've had and just different things um that whole wing now, you know, it, it had, it got mold in it. It has uh, just, it, it's, it also needs walls to be taken down. It needs to be totally reconfigured for bigger equipment because we get pallets of food now. We're not talking people dropping off a couple of sacks of groceries or the um, postal service dropping off, you know, sacks and sacks of groceries that people leave at their mailbox. We're talking now we get big pallets and you cannot physically pick those up without breaking your back. You have to have major equipment. Um, so we have to have the place reconfigured and all the wall stuff taken out, ceiling stuff taken out, it has to be remodeled. So um, people um, like to give certain things to churches like, okay, you need a refrigerator or a freezer? Maybe we can come up with money for it. We'll do that. Yeah. Or do you need a um, just a piece of equipment or a computer? But when it comes to, we need that, but we need it remodeled, which is, you know, $75,000 or something. Well, that's not as interesting. People want something tangible that they can go and say, I gave that refrigerator or something. It's like remodeling's not very, uh, I guess, exciting. It would be for us, but... Um, but we've had to turn down like Walmart because their supplies to us would have been so big, we can't get it through those old doors. You know, our church has been around a long time. We have the narrow doors and windows we don't need in there. And, and it just needs to be redone. Uh, so uh, we had uh, the Houston Food Bank, well, said, well, y'all are going to be one of the pantries that gets a commercial freezer what? for free. So this was a few years back. Well, I go outside the church. Here comes a commercial freezer with some workmen, you know, taking it down our long sidewalk. And I was like, this is awesome, right? Guess what? You couldn't fit the door. You couldn't fit it through the doors. It's, it's too, the doors are too short, narrow, you know, it's, it's too old of a building. It needs to be reconfigured. I mean, you could get into Kroger or something like that. And then we're like, everyone is just getting anxious and worried and we can't get it in, blah, blah, blah. And I hear this guy whistling and he's going, <whistles> not worried one bit. He comes around the corner and he says, hey, I'm a carpenter. He says, if you need that freezer in here, he goes, all I have to do is take this molding off, make some adjustments. It ought to take me about five minutes and uh, we'll get that thing in here. <laughs> and he did. He did. Can you believe that? It's so awesome. Praise God. That'll we got it in. <laughs> and then he put those moldings back up, still whistling away. <laughs> oh, and fun. look how God had the right person there, the carpenter, whistling with a great attitude, ready to use his gift to allow those that freezer in. Wow. You know? So it's just everything in God's timing and with a lot of prayer and people that have passion. 
have to have people that have passion, um, that uh, will work hard and get up early when they're tired and work late and, and do that stuff that's not fun, clean up and sweep the floor and right now sanitize tables. And, and But we wanna work with a community and we like working with other people, we have fun. And so if any of y'all are in the mood to help us with that and be part of our effort in the community. Oh my gosh. So we feed probably, we do statistics because we're partnering with Houston Food Bank. We probably feed a hundred and something, maybe 120 or so every Thursday. And then of course the people that come to the gate at other times during the week. So, um, that's kind of how that works. And um, I have no- That's amazing. Yeah. And I hope you get those grants, whatever you're applying to. Like, yes, I mean, y'all could use that, so. They've been very small so far, but, um, you know, uh, yeah. we'll see, we'll see. Yeah. Um, we need a professional grant writer probably, or somebody that has a little bit of skill in that, that it, it takes a lot of time. And, uh, but we're so happy to do it and just uh, that God can use us in that way. But uh, we've also uh, traveled to East Texas to be part of feeding people in Louisiana. So we take a group of our church members and with donations of um, tuna fish and turkey and things like that and use the food pantry for this as well. And we go down to a church down there, or we did. Right now, there's not that much of a need, but we go to the church, take over their kitchen, and I mean take it over. <laughs> so move out of the way. We're coming through. And uh, sanitize everything, make, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sandwiches. Get them packed up, you know, with some chips and with these and all that, and make an assembly line and then they would, some of their church members then would take it into Louisiana. So we had, once again, trying to do logistics and invent how we're going to do this. It's always new stuff that we haven't done before. And so we did that for weeks. And um, after they had their flooding episode, I don't know if y'all remember when that was happening. And um, so our, our part was not to go into Louisiana. We thought that was our part, but it was not. It was to actually collect the food, take the food, make the food. So sometimes your plans get rearranged. <laughs> so, so I've talked enough. What can y'all uh, tell me? <laughs> Well, Nancy, I never knew that you had a food pantry. I don't know why. Really? Yeah. I, I just never was aware that, that you were doing that much. It was that big. It's, I pictured, it's... like you said, a pantry like we had, because <laughs> I worked the pantry at Trinity at first at the old church, and it was a kitchen, and they came up. Yes. There were several of um, us that went over when they were doing the Thanksgiving with the turkeys. And I was just amazed at all the tables and the, and y'all, I mean, don't take this the wrong way. I'm old. And so I'm telling you that there were people working that day that were older than me because Nancy's got a congregation that is mostly older people. And so they're all out there. And instead of, you know, everybody on their computer or their phone taking in this information, they're writing everything down and, and looking at, at people's information. And then they go. And, and what is so cool is that people are not handing them what they want them to have. They're picking their food from these tables. So it's like they're grocery shopping for themselves. And that does so much for people's um, self-worth. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a great project they have going there and they, they've partnered with so many other people. They've done a lot of work in feeding people in Baytown. 
mm -hmm. and beyond. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, I know we keep all those statistics. I don't have any of them with me. That's where Lori would have been very helpful. But, um, you know, it's just, um, it is what it is. There is a need. And uh, we do make a lot of relationships with the people, friendships. Basically, we become friends. And we have new, new clients that come. Uh, now, Mickey, with COVID, since that happened, we can't do the everybody's picking their stuff and all that um right. so we're out in the parking lot right now but who knows after the vaccinations happen and how we will morph again and do things because it's been constant changing and adaptation to the situation and uh, keeping people you know healthy and safe and uh things like that but yes all ages help and um Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, we're helping a church in Pasadena as well. Their pastor comes and sometimes with somebody else in the congregation and they bring their truck and we load their cars and they take it down to Pasadena and sort everything in the church and then take it out to their community. So that's another new thing. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, right now, people are so food insecure because of COVID and the job situation. That's that's a ministry that's really needed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, and food's so, expensive. I mean, and you mentioned like most of your food is donated. Is that right? Like through the food bank or Target, or do you uh, all we, have to we purchase buy it food? Too. You buy it. We buy it. Too. The congregation buys it too. Um, but we do get. Uh, yes, we buy it from the food bank because we can get the most for our money, um, big quantities of food. Um, but some people, you know, donate. We have to go through everything because we have to make sure it's not, you know, expired or bad or the can's not open, you know, things like that. And so when they do those stamp out hunger food drive things with the U.S. Postal Service, mm -hmm. we're getting a lot of that in Baytown. It comes to our pantry. Hmm. So those postal workers come with a big truck and we have to unload all that <laughs> and sort it. And all that takes time and energy and, and like I say, passion to know you're doing something so um, important and that it's God's work, you know. Um, and so... And here's one thing, well, no, I'm not going to go into that. Forget it. It's good, but I, I'm not going to go into it. So anyway, these things that you see in the stores that these projects they're doing and for hunger and, and we have benefited from that for our community. We had the big, um, a big truck out there that was new when JJ Watt um, gave to Houston uh, for food issues and things like that. Well, one of the trucks showed up and it said on the end of it, JJ Watt Foundation. Well, that was part of that money. And that truck had, it was refrigerated for a part that had for like apples or oranges and a center section for milk. This section had cereal. So people could pull up to his trailer and we'd get them that food. That was another surprise. So we've had lots of surprises and there's probably been so many angels out there that we don't know about, you know, angels unaware. And so we're very excited about that. So for me, one of the wonderful things is to like hear about what you all are doing and how well it works. Because, you know, different churches have different specialties, right, in what they do to serve our, our, our wider community. And, and Trinity doesn't do a lot with food because people like you do it so well. So it's how do we support one another, right? Like, it's, it's amazing to me to hear, um, like, how far it's come from that pantry to what you are doing. And just so the people on the call know that, yes, we are going to be giving you guys a, a gift for that. And so we're excited to um, support you in that. But um, it's just amazing to hear all that you do um, with the, the food insecure in our community. Yeah, so I'm grateful for that. It's, uh, yes. And, um, you know, I don't know, we, and your, your volunteers change, 
because, uh, and especially with COVID, you know, some people are in their home now. So those volunteers we don't have, but now with vaccines coming, we might get them back. <laughs> Y'all are all welcome. <laughs> or, you know, sometime, really, if you want, come by the church uh, and just take a tour um, and just see. And you'll go, what? You have this in here? <laughs> Whoa, what is that doing in there? I remember the first time I told him, well, we could put a freezer in my office. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was willing to do it. You know, you have to have the right electrical hookup too. So we had to look at all that. You got, got you have to have the power for those things, you know, to power those things up. And uh, so um, anyway. I don't live in Baytown, so I don't even know where your church is. Where is it? Where like, do you live? In Clear Lake. But I come from Trinity, obviously. <laughs> oh, from Clear Lake. You just come up uh, 146, and we're right, just right on the on the access road of 146, okay. right north of uh, Garth. Okay, that's the church I thought you were talking about, but I wasn't sure. Yeah. They're right down from uh, Robert Jordan. Okay. Yeah, I always tell people we're behind the old blockbuster video. They always go, oh. <laughs> now it's Buddy's Rena Center, but that's how they know where we are. If I say we're at 712 Schilling Avenue, nope, they don't know. Okay. Oh, hey, there you go. Right. Oh, there we are. Yes. Yes, here's 146 right here. <laughs> And you yeah, know that's so what the we're, church also has when it's not COVID the after an after school program, and uh, um, and the kids there get snacks and and eat and and work on their homework and all that. So they do they do a lot there with with um, yeah. Um, the kids aren't there at the moment. They'll be back probably in March. Uh, COVID has rearranged YMCA schedule and all that, but they get fed. Which we understand because COVID rearranged our our YMCA stuff and our uh, ESL stuff. And so we definitely understand that. <laughs> yes. Oh, boy. But yeah, you'll see the, the Houston Food Bank truck pull up every week and it's for the food for the kids. They get fed, um, I believe it's breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I think, because it's like from seven to six thirty at night. So they get fed a lot, and uh, they can concentrate on their studies and and play outside because that courtyard's gated. So um, you have to buzz to get in. It's very secure. They make sure mm -hmm. it's a huge thing right there. Security for the kids. You know, um, I forgot about talking about that, Mickey. Yeah, that has to do with food. It does. Mm -hmm. Yes. Other thoughts or questions that y'all have? How many of y'all knew this has existed before? No. All right, are we got like kidding? one or two. Marcia so like, did. Yeah, Marcia did. So like, all right, that's huge. Yeah. Now we know what some of our neighbors are doing and how we are. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. What other questions or thoughts do you have for Nancy? Some people, yeah, Carrie. I was glad to hear that you're connected to the Houston Food Bank because mm. I know I grew up here, but I know people that when I worked downtown, they would participate with the Houston Food Bank and I wouldn't participate because I thought I would rather give locally in Baytown, not knowing that Baytown, part of Baytown, benefited from the Houston Food Bank. So that's good to know. That's very good to know. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes. You can buy big, uh, you know, when you're going to feed a hundred something people a week, you have to buy these cases of food. And so you put in your order yeah. of what you, you know, want. Sometimes you get some other stuff thrown in there or they give you something you're not supposed to have, but pretty much it works real well. And so you want to get your whatever tuna fish, your chickens, 
chicken star stuff, uh, you know, uh, spaghetti and, and we get meats, we get frozen goods, we get uh, um, food that um, has enough to give them protein, vegetable, you have to get, when you're partnered with the Houston Food Bank, you have requirements. You just can't give them just, you know, potato chips and uh, sweets. And you have to have, you know, enough um, of certain types of food for a family of a certain size. So it's, it's very regulated. You're also inspected by the Houston Food Bank and City of Baytown. They come through and inspect everything and give you a rating and um, so that you can have that going. Uh, so you are monitored and you have to turn in statistics and everything else. Uh, and um, so if you look uh, where they keep their food, the, the shelving has to be so high off the floor and you have to have, you have to have enough space. I mean, it's pretty, we looked at it before as a church to see if we wanted to join in that. And we would have had to do so much restructuring to have a place to even be able to think about doing that. But, uh, and Nancy and them have been flooded before, but they still, they have their, they have their space that they, they keep up because they do come through and, and decide if you can continue or not. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, they do. And yeah, nothing can be on the floor. Like you can't have food on the floor. Um, it's got to be raised up on a shelf and, and thanks to that basketball team, Lee College men's basketball and their coaches coming over, they help put up a lot of our shelving. Those basketball players, they're tall, they're strong. They can get up there, <laughs> maneuver all that stuff in, lickety split, they're, it's done. It's like, man, I would have been scrambling around looking for rubber bands and where's the hammer and, you know, the coaches, man, they coach them, you know. <laughs> doing this get over there and do this and man it was awesome how long have you all been doing this ma'am how long have you all been doing this Ooh, way before i got there and i've been there eight years so it's okay. probably been oh i don't even know i have this written down somewhere um A long time. probably god 20 <laughs> years 20 something years Oh, wow. And someone told me, you have the wrong name on that food pantry. It should not have the word pantry in there. It should now be St. Paul's uh, like food distribution center. <laughs> <laughs> I just cracked it. I was like, oh. But we also work with Hearts and Hands. I don't know if y'all have ever heard of them. They're kind of yeah. our hub. We are very familiar yeah. with hearts and hands of support. So instead them. of us going down to pick up all this stuff at Houston Food Bank, now you go to your hub, which is hearts and hands, and you get it from them and bring it back. So on Tuesdays, that's loading day. We go pick up and then load all that into our food pantry and, you know, unpackage it or whatever. And then they also have to uh, pack the bags on Tuesday. is a very busy day too. And then for getting ready for Thursday for the people and the people, boy, they get there early. Some kind of almost camp out because they want to be first in line and they want to make sure we don't run out of, we have, God has provided where we never run out of food. Thank mm. the Lord. Never run out of food. There's I have, always a question. have we, have we ever provided produce from our garden? I know Missouri street, I believe most of our produce, at least recently since I've been here, had been going to Missouri Street. I don't know if before that, Nancy. Do you know? Uh, somebody did provide us produce. I believe it was, I'm trying to think if it was with your church. It was a gentleman and it might have been. Can you think of Robert anyone? Robert Harton? Was it Robert uh, Harton? Yes, I believe so. And Is then he it was about our church. 40 ish something? Yeah. Um, yes, I think he did. Yes. And we just we didn't really have like that. We didn't have enough produce for as many people as they serve. 
-hmm. Missouri Street is smaller. Oh, okay. And at least okay. most recently, we haven't really had people interested in growing the produce. Yeah. And so we don't have the produce. Yeah. Okay. Do you inner network like with uh, Missouri Street or with Wooster Baptist? Because they have no. a food pantry on Thursdays. Yes, and Baptist somebody does. else does. Living Hope has one on Thursdays. They're on 146. I don't know if you pass by them. Um, we there keep are a, a list. number in the there are a number in Baytown that are thriving. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Nancy, but a lot through the Houston Food Bank and Hearts and Hands and you all, like you said, it's this hub and then it's distributed. But if yes. I'm not wrong, people in Baytown are able to usually to find food because of the amazing work that you do. That's one of the things that our city, our area actually does really well. And coming from an area before that didn't do that well, I was amazed. I was like, oh, this is a beautiful, this is working. This is what the kingdom of God is like. And so I, I, I'm grateful that we can support y'all's necessary work, but I'm also thrilled that like, oh, like actually people are getting what they need. As you said, you never run out of food. Yes. Um, oh, I forgot to tell you, we're, we're going to do a new partnership with um, the Baytown Methodist Hospital with food. Oh, oh. yes. Oh. Or not providing them food, but like, oh, I know them. That's not going to be your hospital food. No. <laughs> Hello, my be Sorry, that was not kind. Okay, we're we're starting it, but um, it's it's a work in progress right now. But it's going to help people that need the food that are um, having issues. Um, so that's very exciting. Something new, and it's a learning curve, you know, like everything. And uh, so. Um, and also like when, if the police officers have something where if they go on a welfare check or something and see that somebody's in need or whatever, and they need something, right? They can come by and get the food and take it back to that person. So we have the food resourcing in Baytown. We do. It's just getting the word out there, you know, um, and making sure people understand it's there for them. You have, one thing that we had to understand is some people feel kind of embarrassed or something when they come and they'll apologize like I've I've never had to do this before and I just feel so funny doing this asking for food or you know they don't feel good doing that um, and so we try to um, make them feel welcome and and that we have this is we have it to share and we want to share it that's what it's there for to share and God's provided it so, um, you and know, Nancy, and, they don't have to have a they don't have to have a referral from Love Network, right? So some yeah. of the places where you go, you have to have you, you'll get a they'll get a referral from Love Network, and Love will tell wherever they're going on that day because they're open on different days, which is really good. Um, but sometimes they have to, Love Network will call over and say, hey, I'm sending these people over. But at yes. Nancy's church, they just line up. Some, some food pantries, you have to be living in their zip code. Mm -hmm. Did y'all know that? Yeah. Uh, uh, I have heard that from many people. And uh, at our food pantry, we don't care where you're from. You're going to get fed. You can be from, we don't care. What country, what state, what, what's your situation? You're going to get fed. So um, they, they ask that a lot when they call you on the phone. They go, well, I don't, you know, I live in um, Laporte or I live in Pasadena or I live, you know, this, that, and the other. I live in this zip code area, which is not a Baytown zip code. It's okay. Come on and get some food. We've got it to share, so. God always provides. And uh, we had Lamar Elementary. Does anybody know where that is? It's real close to our church. Oh, good, good. Yeah, um, we work, we've worked with them for a lot with the after school program. A lot of their kids come over to the church. And um, one day we were in a meeting and it was a social ministry meeting. And we get a call from them that they had. Uh, this was a few years back, but they had 
huge boxes of food and and they didn't know who could use that now when i say huge boxes i mean huge <clears throat> they were like from the floor to i don't know maybe huh, four feet high something like that and they said if you can get over here in 30 minutes you can you can get these boxes for your food pantry <clears throat> so we're right in the middle of a meeting and i said how are we going to get them and because everybody has, you know, their car or whatever. <laughs> so they go, well, we're going to get that food for the food pantry. So we're going. So we made this um, train of cars and went there and lined up our cars at the school. And um, these guys that were really strong came and helped us load all that in our cars. And we <laughs> brought it back to the church and we unloaded it and... Uh, we just never know what's going to happen. You know, <laughs> I'm like, that's God again, doing wonderful stuff again, surprising us and just, you know, saying, don't worry. Everything's going to be fine. I'll supply you. Just stay in the boat. <laughs> stay in the boat. <laughs> I love it. Any other questions or thoughts for Nancy that you all have? Who's coming tomorrow to see how it works? Tomorrow's Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Nine to or maybe you want to come when it's, uh, I don't know, not quite so crazy. Not, not <laughs> quite a little poor. You really should. You ought to come and uh, we'll stay six feet apart. You wear your mask anytime and uh, one it of would these be great. Days. Yeah. One you know, I just want you to know, Nancy talks about it like, you know, it, it's just these little things that they do, but they do a lot of work and it's an awesome pantry. If you're out there and you see those people coming through when it's not COVID, um, I mean, they are treated as if they are guests who were expected. And it is a, it is a sight to see. Well, <laughs> well, we are going to support you, but um, we should pray, right? We're not just going to say we're going to pray for you. Like, let's actually pray for you. Yes, <laughs> now, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Right now. And yes. so um, I'm going to open it. Does someone want to say a prayer? Um, uh, Cause I know we've got many people in this space that pray, not just those with callers or whose callers are in the other room. Mm. So um, I want to open it up and uh, lift you and invite you to pray. So God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. I want to pray. Oh, holy God. I give you thanks for this ministry. I give the thanks for the joy and for your presence, your guiding hand, and your power at what can be done when your people hear your call. Come, Holy Spirit, come and just pour your grace over this ministry. In Christ's holy name, I pray. Amen. Amen. I do want to give space for others to lift up and join in prayer as well. I give thanks, Lord God, for the joy I see in Nancy when she talks about this ministry. It is obviously so spirit-filled and such a gift for the community. And I thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you, Lord, for the volunteers and all those who are involved in this ministry. And we just thank you for your continued provision. And Lord, I pray that you will lead Nancy to a person that can help her do the grants or lead to sources that do grants. Uh, so I just pray that you will provide that help for her so that they can remodel their pantry and 
have it be better fitted to serve your people that come there. And thank you for her witness of when you make yourself available, you take them up, Lord God. And we thank you for that. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Nancy. Thank you for sharing your spirit and your heart and about your food pantry with us. And it's been a real delight. So y'all join me in giving Nancy a big thank you. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, here's here's my hug. <laughs> all right. Yes. Got it. yes. Did you get it? Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> And uh, do know, um, do know that we are sending our love and our prayers in some tangible ways as well, your direction. And so, for those who are on the call, know that we're going to support that. And yeah, and then next week in our um, the work of Christmas continues, and we're excited that uh, our very own Rhonda is going to share with us about to release the prisoner and her work in um, women's storybook project and the powerful ministries that are there for those who are imprisoned. Oh, mm. all right. And I just want you to notice that last week, this week, and next week, it's women. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like to note that James and Phil and John represent well, <laughs> and we are grateful for your presence. <laughs> Well, thank you once again, Nancy. And um, it's been a real delight. God bless.